Yeah, those are the views keep becoming. Now, President Jacob Zuma, if you've just woken up, President Jacob Zuma has fired Finance Minister Pravin Gordon from, uh, from that ministry. He's replaced him with now the former Home Affairs Minister Malusi Kigaba. Ntebi Isi Jonas is also out as the Deputy Finance Minister, while Tourism Minister Derek Hanakom, who moved against the President uh, at an ANC National Executive Committee meeting last year, has also been sacked. Now, the scale of this reshuffle is almost unprecedented. Nearly a third of the ministers have changed, and there are 10 new Deputy Ministers as well. Uh, unprecedented. Last time such a big reshuffle happened actually was in 1996, if you can remember that far back. Now, to talk about this, we are joined in our Pretoria studios this morning by Professor Dirk Kotze from the University of South Africa. Professor Kotze, very good morning to you and thank you for being with us. Good morning, thank you. Prof, the worst kept chic secret in South Africa for the last couple of months really is, uh, cab is this cabinet reshuffle. It's now happened. What is your take on what has happened overnight? Well, I think there are two main surprises. The first one, obviously, is the appointment of Malusi Kigaba. He was never in the mix, never been part of the discussion about who might be the next Minister of Finance. Uh, while there was all sorts of discussions about Brian Mulefe and even Sufisu Butelezi earlier mm. on, uh, but never about Malusi Kigaba. The, the, the second point, I think, which is very interesting is, is that it looks like the, the press conference yesterday by the SACP was, in a sense, the final, last, immediate catalyst mm. for the decision by President Zuma. He was in Cape Town and moved back to Pretoria. But ironically, it wasn't the purge of the SACP. None of the SACP ministers were ac actually removed from cabinet. So that is a very strange sort of combination of what we have seen here. Um, I think what President Zuma has done is to not meet any of the predictions that have been made about the possible cabinet reshuffle. Uh, he included elements of, um, for example, ministers who didn't perform well, but some of them, like the Minister of Social Development, he didn't touch. But that of, of other ministers he removed, like Faith Mutambi, for example. Then also uh, the ministers that criticized him and removed Eric Anukum, but not Dr. Motswaledi. So again, there's not an absolute consistency in what he did. And I think in the end, what he tried to do was not to give ammunition to any of his critics to say this was something which was purely in order to favor the, the Gupta interest um, mm. in, in government. So it was a very, in a sense, I would say almost shrewd approach that was followed by President Zuma in order to accommodate different um, considerations and, and come up with a new cabinet that was completely unpredictable. Professor Kotze, the one name that has not been mentioned in the reshuffle and has not been on the lips of the media this morning, although before there's been lots of talk about uh, the now former AU uh, Commission Chair and Kosazana Dlamini Zuma, uh, there was an expectation that she might even be named as a new finance minister. Are you surprised that she's maybe, in some quarters they say she might have declined? Yes, that, that, that is the other surprise, that she, as well as Brian Mulefi, because there was many uh, predictions or speculations that he could be in the other portfolio other than finance, but still, both of them have not been included. I think the, the, the argument that President Zuma had in mind with this is to say that he wants to avoid that anyone can say to or accuse him that uh, this appointment or reshuffling of cabinet actually was motivated by the internal ANC politics and about the succession debate and ultimately about the national conference and his to de who will determine his successor. So by excluding uh, Dr. Tlamini Zuma, I think... Um, he tried to avoid to be seen as becoming directly involved mm. um, in, the, in the campaigns of the different candidates. Um, but it does not exclude the possibility that he can still have another cabinet reshuffle later in the year. That is not excluded at all. Professor, there have been talk about mass resignations from Parliament by analysts and experts. But these same analysts and experts, they also got it very wrong with regards to the reshuffle itself and the names being mentioned and so forth. Do you expect them to be wrong about, uh, uh, about this kind of, uh, let's call it the, the walkout or, or the mass resignations that's been put forward by, uh, let's call it, experts and analysts? 
I, I, I think, uh, yes, you are in that sense correct. I, I think there was an expectation that there will be a major purge of SACP members, and that could have led then to sympathy uh, resignations by other SACP uh, members of parliament, as well as cabinet members. Um, as well as uh, if someone like, let's say, Brian Mulefi would have been Minister of Finance, it would have given more ammunition um, to other ministers to say, but this is actually not President Zuma who took this decision, but there was an, an hidden agenda or another agenda be, mm. behind this cabinet reshuffle. Now, the, the way in which he now approached this cabinet is, and that's why I use the word shrewd, is that he, in a sense, balanced these appointments to some extent um, and made it much more difficult for uh, that type of sympathy and resignation uh, because it affects persons, uh, ministers, who clearly were problematic in terms of their performance. As I said, others were not affected by it. So it was not purely a, a sort of a political decision-making process or appointments or reshuffling, which can be traced back to the, the factional, factionalism within the ANC itself. And I think that made it very difficult to say, mm. to accuse President Zuma of supporting the one faction in the ANC and, and not the others, and therefore for these resignations mm. also. Prof, in conclusion, what does, this, what, does, what does this reshuffle mean for the tripartite alliance? And also, what does it mean for the ANC heading into an elective conference in December of this year? Well, I, I think for the alliance, it's not going to make much of a difference. I think the position taken by the SACP yesterday is going to be the same still. Uh, although their members were not directly affected in that they've lost cabinet uh, members, uh, the, the, they were, some of them were removed from uh, critical positions. Um, at the same time, the way in which they are related to the succession debate within the ANC, that hasn't changed. Uh, Kusatu, there's open support for Vice uh, Deputy President Ramaphosa. I think that will continue. So in essence, the status quo is going to continue with respect to the uh, uh, alliance, and which means that the alliance is absolutely fractured um, and that there is at this stage not much of an alliance which is actually supporting the Zuma side. Most of it is, is supporting the Ramaphosa side. Um, so from that point of view, I, I don't think we are going to see many changes within the ANC and, and the, for this uh, national conference. Um, this situation, uh, this is, it doesn't have an immediate impact on it. We will have to see how uh, former minister now, Pravin Gordon, is going to position himself within the ANC. He didn't play any prominent role in the ANC's internal debate mm. about the succession. His prominence was more in relation to the Treasury and the role that he plays in government mm. and not so much in the ANC. So we want, will have to see whether this position, that yeah. the fact that he's not in government now anymore, is mean, that will mean that he's going to move over into being a, relative, or a relevant person within the ANC and play a role there for, uh, in respect of the uh, succession. Professor Kotza, thank you very much for making time for us today. We know it's been a last-minute call for you to come in and, and give us your views and analysis on, uh, on the reshuffle. We thank you once again for being with us here on the Newsroom Show. Thank you.